Okay guys, so in this video we're checking out the Dragon Frog 3 inch frame and I picked up this one from Bing and it's about $20, $21 I think right now. Um, two and a half millimeter bottom plate, but this one here uh, is specifically designed for the Vista system. So the camera mount here is um, I think 20 or 21 millimeters. It does come with the camera protector, lens protector for the Vista and the mounting holes on this one are pretty unique. So you got obviously two 20 by 20 or 16 by 16 mounting areas in the front and back here as well as your standard whoop style uh, mounting uh, board here as well, the, the 45 degree one. But you can see that the hole is slightly slotted so it'll take a 25 and a half by 25 and a half or a 26 and a half by 26 and a half whoop style flight controller. So it will this will take a wide variety of components. Anyway, so the um, motor hole pattern here is actually only for 9mm motors and uh, not uh, those of like 12mm and up. So there's a lot of 3 inch motors that are going to be like 12mm, like uh, in the 13 and 14xx size. Uh, this one here is limited to 9mm only, so something you should be aware of. Um, while you have a large variety of electronics here, I think this is they're really kind of targeting this sort of as a lighter setup because it only has a two and a half millimeter bottom plate. It is very stiff, by the way. I mean, it's just kind of it's really just an H design here. It kind of looks like a dead cat, but it's just an H design with the this sort of bracing here in the back. It's very very stiff. All right, so this frame here, well, the TPU components is coming in at about 41, a little over 41 grams. So obviously, if you don't want to use any of the TPU components, which are I guess totally optional, because save a little bit away there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move over a bunch of components from the VizWhoop here, and this is going to be a fairly straightforward transformation because these 1204 motors here have the 9mm hole pattern, those will move over no problem. Um, not 100% sure if the motor wires are going to be long enough, that I'm, that's one thing I'm, not, I'm a little bit concerned about because the, the front ones should be fine, that should, that should have any problem reaching over here is the ones in the back here moving up to this position here where it's going to plug in that I'm not 100% sure about what we'll to see because the dimensions are a little bit different but mainly I want to move uh, all the components over so that I can go to uh, three inch prop versus the two and a half inch prop but all the other components the Vista will go right in the back right here you got your flight controller uh, that basically it's a uh, this one has a whoop style flight controller it's actually uh, rotated 45 degrees so it looks kind of like, a, like a, maybe a 20 by 20 but it's actually a whoop style flight controller and then I'll just stick the Vista in the back there with the antenna and the camera fits easily in the front and they just have to plug in the motor so moving the parts over basically shouldn't take too long you just have to unscrew everything and unplug stuff and I don't believe there's going to be any soldering needed so I'm just going to go ahead and move everything over and if anything unusual happens I'll let you guys know after uh, I've moved it over, but it should be a fairly easy process. So if you're having to have the VizWhoop or similar components to the VizWhoop with the uh, motors that are, have the 9mm hole, hole pattern, then uh, moving your parts over to this particular frame should be fairly straightforward. And then you can go to, a, in this case I'm going to move from a 2.5 inch to a 3 inch, and uh, ought to have some pretty nice performance on 3 inch, even though it's only a 1204. And with the mounting here uh, in the top here, it's possible with maybe some sort of special TPU port that I could design uh, you could maybe even carry a GoPro with this so go ahead and I'll move all this stuff over and let's take a look at it okay so I got all the parts moved over and it was fairly straightforward one uh, little thing to be aware of is that the motors for the back here the motor wires aren't long enough so you need a little extender here just a three um, if you're gonna use the plugs you need a three pin plug here I have a little three pin plug extender that goes over there. You can pick these up at Gnarly FPV. I think that's where I got these at. Or you can just cut the connector off and just uh, solder on a wire extender to the solder pads on the flight controller. Or you can use some race wire, for example. That's another common uh, solution here. But 
besides that, everything else here are the same parts from the Wizwhoop, um, just transferred over. And um, the flight controller is going to be reoriented here. So you're going to have to probably use my CLI dump. I'll link that down in the description because you're going to probably have to remap the motors and check your motor directions. That's probably the uh, most difficult part of this uh, transfer is that if you're a beginner that you're probably going to have some issues with that. Um, basically when you when you uh, mount the flight controller here, uh, it depends on the orientation. In my case I have the USB port coming out the back right side here and that's where the power cord comes in. I have a zip tied here to the top plate. If you do that the yaw orientation is reversed 180 degrees and so all the motors will need to be remapped. And um, so again, uh, just to you know, use my CLI dump and then uh, you'll have to adjust the motor direction. So in this case I have the direct motors going in the normal fashion here instead of reversed. And you need to adjust that in um, BL Heli Suite. But that's it. Um, yeah, just use my PID tune in the CLA dump as well. The I didn't have to do any soldering at all, so I just use this plug here, and there's a plug on that side. So there's actually zero soldering on this um, transfer. I have the Vista here on the bottom plate. You'll have to use that nut here on the reverse side here with a screw. Otherwise, the screw is too long and will hit the top plate. So uh, use that extra nut right there on the bottom and then place the Vista directly on the bottom plate like that. You have a little bit of a gap there for your battery strap. And then the wires for the Vista right there, just, you just go over the top of the Vista and that goes to the flight controller. I didn't have to um, desolder any of those. I did have to disconnect the uh, VTX antenna to get it through this little hole here on the TPU part. But uh, yeah, just basically disconnect it and then reconnect it to actually take the little screw off here to do that. Um, that's it. Remount the camera with the little TPU protection uh, camera protector on there. And it all, it all went together really, really easy. So let's see how much this weighs. I'm going to actually use the HQ. I think these are the, what are these? The AT 1.0, yeah, these are the 1.5s, T3 by 1.5s. So this ought to give a pretty good flight time. I'm going to run this on 3S. So. 115.4 grams uh, without the battery. And so I'm probably going to run a like 520 3S battery here, one of those long ones. And I should, um, give, I think I'll give it a pretty good flight time. You might be able to run a 4S here if you if you put a throttle cut on there, because on 4S on 5000 kV, it's probably going to be too much for these uh, 1204 motors or the uh, 400 ESC. If you want maybe a little bit more uh, flight time, uh, you could probably go for us, but you'll have to do some adjustments. If you just do that straight out of the box, you're probably going to fry any AC or a motor. So if you're going to do this, just run it on a 3S like 520. I'll link a battery down in the description as well. But uh, I think this is this has got to be probably the cheapest 3-inch uh, DJI setup out there. Obviously, you have to you have to put this together yourself. Get the Vizwhoop at 249 and this frame at $22. It's like what? Uh, about 272 total, and the next cheapest one that I am aware of is the iFlight DC3, and that's coming at like 380. And that does come with a full air unit. I don't know of any other 3 inch ones that come with the Vista. There's the 95X, that's a 2.5 inch whoop, but no uh, 3 inch like traditional, you know, uh, no, no, no whoop, like no, no prop guards, just regular, regular 3 inch prop. But if you know of any that are in this price range, under $300, um, you know, bind and fly, pre-built. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. I, I did quite a bit of searching. I couldn't find anything that comes with a Vista or a full DJI air unit that's under $300. And if you're looking to get a DJI and you know, for, for very little, this is not a bad setup. So anyway, um, go ahead and show you some flight footage. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. All right, so I'm just going to do a little cruising around. It's kind of windy here again. It's been, every day it's been so windy. But let's see how the video performs. This, you know, we know what, what Vista feels like. This is not uh, anything new. But I wanted to get an idea of how this would perform as a 3-inch. 
So far, not bad. It's a, it does feel a little underpowered. It's 1204 motors on the 3 inch on 3S. I think I was flying it on a 4S on a 2.5 inch prop before. And it had a lot of wobbles and stuff. Um, I think it had a lot to do with the frame. This frame is a lot stiffer, so it should be less wobbles. I think I need to make some adjustment to the PIDs, but I think they've uh, I've replaced all of the weeds that were here before with grass. If I remember right, this all used to be like tall weeds or bushes. Now we've got grass here. Uh, same over here. Alright, so... I mean, it's fairly stable. I think I need to reduce my rates. A little, a little shaky on the rates. Performing very nice. I'm not doing anything special yet. Alright, let's go above. Yeah, it flies much better as a 3 inch on the 1204 5000 TV. Plus, the frame and everything makes a big difference. It just doesn't have the power, so. You got a little bit of vibration there, but you can see as it's coming out of the split S, it's taking a lot more throttle to so come out of it. Now you can see the shakes on the full throttle punch out. So that's uh, could be PIDs, also the props, and the frame as well. Like I said, I don't, I don't really consider this a acro machine. This is this setup here is basically a uh, entry level DJI three inch cruising around. You know, if you if you got like a Mavic Mini and you want to get into FPV. I'm gonna put this thing together. Um, this is kind of the next, kind of the first step into FPV with something like this. So it's not bad, and then the price isn't too bad either. Going way, way down here. Video looks really good. It's really amazing how well Vista performs. You can have so much confidence just flying wherever you want. As long as you're just kind of cruising around here, this is totally acceptable. I don't think this is going to be for acro or racing. Now I'm way the hell down over here. Still 25 megabits. Only 200 milliwatts of power. Now you really can adventure into some other areas here. Let's see. Oh, I can want to get on the other side of those trees. Yeah, this is path will come back. Come over here. This place was just crawling with a whole bunch of people, and now they seem to have all left. As soon as I go above 50% throttle, it does a lot of shaking. It's a combination of a lot of things. I might need to lower the PIDs. They might, the P gains might be a little bit too high. But just kind of cruising around in 3S, no problem. At 10.8 volts, pretty good flight time. Pretty expected for this motor combination on 3S. It's a bit windy right now. Yeah, there's a little bit of bobbling there, but that's the wind, I think. Where am I at? Like five minutes flight time at 10.8 volts on a, on a 520 3S. Yeah, so, you know, if you're just cruising around, you can get a pretty good flight time on this setup as well. 
I mean, like, just hearing the props and everything at this throttle level, it doesn't sound bad. It sounds clean. Let's do a punch out here where you can hear it. So that's full throttle there, almost full throttle. Yeah, I think I just need a little, little bit of a pit adjustment. But again, I I think I'll just leave it alone like this. I don't really consider this a racer or a freestyler. It's just a cruiser and exploring 3-inch DJI for pretty cheap. All right, 10.4 volts. We're gonna bring it in here. Let me know what you guys think.